Billy Gould, known as the Ghoul of the Harbor, was a serial killer in Aberdeen, Washington from 1903 to 1910. It is believed he murdered between 40 and 200 men, shot them in the head, took their valuables, before dumping their bodies through a trap door to their watery graves in the Chehalis and Wichita rivers. So many bodies, the townspeople referred to this as the floater fleet. But did he do it? You decide. This is where my story begins. This is where my story begins. In the early 20th century, Grace Harbor was the center of the world's largest lumber industry. Grace Harbor also had the most densely unionized workforce in the state. Billy was a representative for the Sailors Union of the Pacific, SUP for short. In fact, he was the most prominent regional trade unionist. This made him very powerful. Gould fought to remove fall traps from saloons in which he accused saloon keepers of using to drop drunk men into the Chehalis and Wishka rivers. He also tried to have street lights installed around the river banks. Public records state that most of the floaters found in the river between 1903 and 1910 were a result of unsafe working conditions. The sailors' union members were a high percent of the floater fleet. Billy Gould was dedicated to keeping these men safe. Back then, sailors were treated badly, the worst of which ship captains had murdered union members and other sailors to enforce discipline on the ship. They drugged and kidnapped workers to force them to work under prison-like conditions. They used straight-up violence. They would also imprison their workers in chains if they resisted. Gould made sure this was not allowed to happen on the ships that he provided men for. These ships were referred to as hell ships in which the captains violently acted against their men. The workers, known as wage workers, signed a contract that they could not leave or they could be thrown in jail. For this reason, sailors and longshoremen declared a coast-wide strike. Also, there was another battle going on between Gould and the elites, which are the politicians local newspapers, business owners, and the Chamber of Commerce, whom all wanted the Montesano Courthouse in between Aberdeen and Hopewiam. Gould thought it was a waste of time and taxpayers' money and fought to keep it where it was. The courthouse stayed in Montesano. But between this battle and the strike, all of the elites now see Gould as public enemy number one. And these elites had other ideas. They formed a citizens community, a organization of elite locals, mostly bosses and Republican politicians, to get rid of Gould. That was its sole purpose and they chose the name Citizens Committee for very important reasons. 
Citizens' Committees were formed throughout the American West as anti-union institutions. They formed as a vigilante organization to attack strikers, radical workers to beat and evict people from town, In 1909, the Citizens Committee was determined to get rid of Ghoul, so they reached out to a labor spy firm, a firm that's primary goal is to infiltrate unions, spying on union members and have them removed, often creating false stories, to have working class activists removed from activity. Meanwhile, Ghoul is working on keeping the streets safe. He helps the police with criminal investigations. In the early part of 1910, the body of sailor Charles Hadberg was found in the Chehalis River. February of 1910, Ghoul was arrested, put in jail, and on trial for the murder of Charles Hadberg. April of 1910, sailor John Klingenberg testifies that Ghoul forced him to kill Hadberg. And in May of 1910, jury convicted Ghoul of first degree murder. Ghoul was sentenced to life in prison Billy Gould died in 1927. He was convicted because of two witnesses, Patty McHugh, a labor spy, whom was hired by the elite group to produce evidence against Gould. The other was his friend, sailor John Klingenberg, who testifies that Gould forced him to kill Hadberg. Klingenberg later says that the whole thing was a put-up job, suggesting that this was a conspiracy against school.